wild, wild. And I know when I spoke to you first, I was like, how do you even unpack that? Like, it's <laughs> wild. I love it. I love it. I'm glad that you are here. I'm glad that you have the ability to share. I'm glad that you choose to share because because we have the ability doesn't mean that we take the next steps to do it, you know? Right. And right. I appreciate the fact that you're doing it and sharing with everyone. I need you to speak to our entrepreneurs that are listening about this whole journey. Now your journey, you know, is your journey, but if you could go back and speak to your younger self, what would you go back and tell yourself? in regards to entrepreneurship entrepreneurship today we have the lovely vivacious patel and she's going to share her journey with us and and by journey it's like a story that only she can tell if i tell please go ahead and share with our audience like your your journey your story how'd you start Ooh, that is a very vague question and that answer could go on forever but I'll i know it's, a, it's a loaded it. gun right there no <laughs> My name is Vitel. Once again, everyone, I'm an actress, model, entrepreneurial, serial entrepreneur, <laughs> hence why I'm on the show. Um, I, I do a lot of things. I'm the founder of Us Three Productions, um, director, producer, you name it, recently published author. And, um, and, and so my journey, I guess my journey started with acting as far as my serial entrepreneur journey, but it has yeah. hence um, evolved into many things the main thing and the main purpose for everything that I do, the thing that links everything together is that I am helping people to heal from trauma, to overcome, to live their best life, to break generational curses. That's what it's all about. When it comes to everything that I do, that's what it's all about. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to, to, to dive in. I know you say you started in acting. Um, mm -hmm. So what age did you start acting and what led you to acting? Um, I've been acting for as long as I can remember. Honestly, I don't remember what age that started, but I know from just looking at pictures, videos and things that I've been doing it since elementary school. Um, that's further back than I can actually remember without looking at pictures. Um, but full time, I went full time in 2009 when I um moved to Atlanta to pursue this full time when I lost my last day job. Um, that was the last straw for me. I had been fired from multiple day jobs for the craziest of reasons, um, often because people just didn't like me or I was inspiring people too much and things along that line. Um, but the last job that I was fired from, I was fired because I was too pretty. I was told by the actual executive of the company, um, and I was the executive assistant, that um, I was too pretty to keep a regular job and I'm going to have to pursue the acting thing that I'm that I'm going after. And that was my cue, that was my sign. I'm like, okay, Lord, we're gonna do this <laughs> full time, here we go. <laughs> so it's just been on a journey ever since. <laughs> and, and what did that look like for you making that transition? Oh, it was not easy um, and it was, a process really because you know I, I moved to um, Atlanta it, it was somewhat of a comfort zone it was definitely outside of my comfort zone but it was somewhat still comfortable because obviously I had the choice between Atlanta or LA um, I knew someone in Atlanta I had some extended family in Atlanta so it was a little more comfortable knowing like we have a place to stay you know because I had a family I was married with two kids at the time and um and so you know we had a place to stay and things like that so it was a little bit smoother of a transition than just completely going to a place where I had no one didn't know anyone and all of those things so um and I also had a goal to work with Tyler Perry Studios so that was like a big deal for me so I was like okay Atlanta it is plus it was a little bit closer I was coming down from Kentucky um but it was definitely a leap of faith faith because I, I just, you know, you have to just learn to do it scared. And that was probably the first time I'd really done that um, in a major way. And at that point in my life, my decisions affected everybody, you know, because I had a whole family. So I had to mm -hmm. I couldn't just make decisions 
on my own based on me. So, um, you know, I had to also do what was best for my family. So I did um, go back and forth doing gigs for a while, um, did a lot of extra work, did just whatever I could get my hands on to do um, when I first got here, just to build that name for myself. I literally, um, I got had to get creative. I literally started uh, baking cookies. Uh, I started getting known as the cookie lady for a while. A lot of people don't know this. Um, but when I first got to Atlanta, I was known as the candy lady or the cookie lady because I would um, make little bags of candy with my um, business card and my um, Instagram and everything in, in that information um, in the bags. And I would go sell them, especially um, to people coming out the clubs when they were um, most likely to want something sweet. <laughs> trying nice. to phrase this correctly for a lot of people. <laughs> Um, you know, so I would I would go after that audience. And that's how I really built like a big following and, and everything really quickly. Um, and also was able to hustle up some money to continue to do what I was doing as well without going back to a day job. So it was um, it was a transition and a process and still is, as you know, just new levels, new devils. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's kind of how that started out. <laughs> And I want to jump into that a little bit because a lot of people don't understand that the, the journey is really a journey, right? Mm -hmm. So what when you were going through that process and saying, okay, fine, I'm going to do this to supplement, right, mm -hmm. um, on my journey, was your family supportive? Like, did you have like a really strong presence behind you? Um, so my blood family was not. Um, they definitely discouraged it. And so I learned to do things secretly. Um, I learned to not tell people your dreams is a lesson that a lot of us have to learn in life. Um, so I just, you know, made those decisions without my family's input. But I did have a supportive husband at the time. So that was that was a big help. Um, and, you know, of course, my kids supported me. They didn't have much choice. But, you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, so that's really was my support system is my household. And and um, and so, yeah, we just went for it and I was encouraged in that area. But as far as like blood family, not so much. <laughs> um, my closest relatives um, were my grandmother and grandfather. They were practically my parents and, and um, who had a, a, the biggest input on my life. Um, and so them being old fashioned, they did not see acting as an actual job even mm -hmm. though they watch TV. And I'm like, you do realize those people are getting paid to entertain you every day and you pay your cable bill and that's how they, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how they make a living. So I had to kind of explain that to them, but yeah, they're they're old fashioned. So I didn't blame them for not supporting. Um, I know they love me and, and would encourage me to do anything except things that didn't make sense to them. So that's kind of where we were with that. Wow. Wow. And do you find that or did you find that they weren't also supportive because of things that may have happened prior to that? Um, or or was it just that same thing that they were old fashioned? Yeah, I think it's just, um, you know, everybody's belief is based on the life that they live and how they're raised. And, you know, you think about our grandparents like, you know, they I, I'm pretty I think my grandmother, I'm trying to remember the history, but. Um, you know, the, the, her mother was born into slavery. So it's like if, you know, all of their ancestors were in this position, then it takes sometimes generations in order to break that mindset. And I think that's something that even we're still working on in the 21st century is we've come a long way, but we still have a lot of mindset to break just because of where our ancestors came from. And, and that's why I'm all about breaking generational curses. So I think that was the main thing that that would have that stopped them from, you know, and even still to this day, my, my grandfather, my grandfather, rest, rest his soul has passed on, but my grandmother is still alive and well. And she um, I, I'm, I update her on what I'm doing, but I also still don't tell her too much because I know that she doesn't quite understand. You know, Like it still doesn't make much sense to her <laughs> that I'm doing this crazy thing full time, still have been for more than 20 years now. <laughs> but, you know, so. But yeah, she she supports me in the best way that she can. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. How, how has mindset helped you in terms of making that transition even in your own life? Absolutely. Yeah. Mindset is everything. Um, it's still something that I'm constantly working on. I think it's something that we all should be constantly working on for as long as we are alive um, because, you know, we're always learning and growing. But mindset is everything. Like I really had to break a lot of um, 
poverty mindset is a big thing in my family. <laughs> and that's something like I'm, I'm definitely planning on being the first billionaire in my family. Um, so well on my way uh, to being the first millionaire at this point. So I'm looking forward to I'm, I'm aiming even higher, you know, as my mindset grows and, and I accomplish more, I have to aim even higher. Um, but, you know, that's that's something that um, is generational as well. And so, you know, the poverty mindset, the belief that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, like that's something that we quote, you know, we just throw these Bible scriptures around, but we don't really believe it. All of us don't really believe it every day, all the time. So, um, you know, you truly have to believe that you can do all things. And that is not easy to believe in this world when you when you see the reality of what's in front of you, the things you, you have to deal with on a daily basis. Um, you know, you have to keep reminding yourself. You have to keep quoting those scriptures until you believe it. You have to, you know, um, I believe in practical applications. I'm, a, I'm big on practical application to um, change that mindset. I, I do a lot of sticky notes. I have like 12 of them in front of me right now that you can't see. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, sticky notes and things that is just going to constantly put in your face what you know you need to believe even when it's hard to believe that. So, um, you know, those encouraging, motivating thoughts that that are necessary on a daily basis, I believe in sticky notes. So I need to get them to sponsor me. So we <laughs> <laughs> to check, I'll be promoting. <laughs> but yeah, that's just one of the many practical applications. Um, but mindset is everything. So walk us through. So you have the mindset of at that time, I'm going to hustle. I'm going to get this done and I'm going to do, I'm going to follow my dreams mm -hmm. and to where you are now. Like, what does that journey really look like? Maybe you may have to rephrase the question. I don't quite understand. So, so the mindset of, of course, you're like, okay, I'm going to hustle. I'm going to, you know, mm -hmm. but you've, you've obviously gone through a lot. You auditioned mm -hmm. a lot to get from point A to point B, mm -hmm. you now have a production company. You have all these different things. Right. What, does that journey look like for that young, aspiring, I'm, I'm going to act to know doing the thing and being the person? Um, okay, hopefully I'm understanding you correctly. I didn't know if you were asking like what it looks like presently, like right now compared to what it looked like before. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's a process. And I, I mentioned a quick quote earlier new levels, new devils. Like I'm really understanding that even more so now because, mm -hmm. um, and I heard Taraji P. Henson, I watched one of her interviews the other day and she was saying how even where she is at, you know, on the level that she's at or that we all see her at, it's still a struggle. Like the more money you make, the more money you have to spend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, you have to be willing to invest in yourself. Um, and so as I went from a whole poverty, struggling, homeless mindset, you know, and, and situation to seeing what's really possible. And, OK, we can be housed. And then, you know, you go from uh, living in the car seems like the only thing possible and then moving into an RV. And now that's possible. And then, you know, a two bedroom apartment. Now this seems possible. OK, now I can get a mansion. Now this is possible. So the possibilities just grow as your mindset grows. And but also the responsibilities grow. Um what is the quote to whom much is given, given much is required. Um, that is so true <laughs> because, you know, now I have, like you said, I have a whole production company. I have a team working for me now. So it's like, I'm making more money than I've ever made in my life, but it's all going to the team. It's all going right back into building and, and putting into, because that's how much I believe in, in what we're doing and, and seeing other people that start to gravitate towards you as you continue to pursue and be persistent and consistent and persevere through all, you know, I'm very transparent with my followers. Um, a, a lot of them that have been following me for years know the struggle and some, and a lot of the things that I've gone to through to get to this point. And so um, just having that support and that following and that um, belief in me makes me believe even more. It's like, okay, now I got all these people that are depending on me to make this thing happen that I said I'm going to do. So if I say I'm going to do it, it's going to happen. And so um, that's that's just even more motivating. So in a lot of ways, it becomes easier and less mm -hmm. of a struggle, especially when it comes to your mindset, because you start to see how much you've accomplished. And if I did this, this and this and that, then I can definitely do what's next. You know, you, you start to feel more like you can handle it and more confident. And then as other people believe in you, more determined and all of those things. But then you know, sometimes the problems get bigger too. <laughs> so yeah. like the pros and cons. Um, I watched a, a, 
I, I like to go on YouTube, another practical application, hint, hint, everybody. Um, I'll go on YouTube and look up motivational videos, especially when I'm not feeling it. It's just not, you know, I got to get myself pumped. And so I'll go watch, um, you know, Tony Robbins or somebody on, on YouTube. And I heard a quote. Um, what did the quote say? Oh, Lord, don't let me forget right in the middle of my thought. <laughs> hey, when that happens. Um you know what? It's going to come back to me. I ain't going to hold y'all trying to trying to figure it out, but it's going to come back to me. But oh, I think I remember. Oh, choose your heart. That's what it was. OK, there it goes. Thank you, Brain, for working with me during this live interview. Um, <laughs> so um, the, the quote that I heard on the YouTube video was to choose your heart. And so um, that made so much sense to me. And that was the first time I had heard that one, because life is hard no matter which choice you choose. Like you are alive and you're a human being and it is hard out here for a human, right? And so, so um, you know, choosing your heart means you either can live this life and just put out fires as they come and just go day by day, just, you know, dealing with whatever, whatever life throws at you and then live your life and eventually you die. That's just the fact of the matter. Um, and then on the other hand, you choose your this hard. It's it's so much harder in a lot of ways because you have all these, you know, new levels, new devils. And then you you have all these attacks coming at you. You have all this you have to persevere through and you have to push through and you have to. But then the reward, you know, by the time I'm out here fighting to help save lives and that and the reward that I get while I'm living is the reward of knowing that I'm helping so many people. And it's knowing that. Um, people's lives are, are literally being changed and saved because I'm saying yes every day. I have to uh, you know, continue to choose that. And that is a great reward. But also the reward that I ultimately get when we when I get to what is ultimately the only thing promised to all of us, like we're going to expire one day. This flesh is not going to last. And when I get to that point, I want to be able to look back on my life and say, this is what all you know, that I accomplished. And this is the difference that I made in the world. This is the legacy that I left behind. Like, it's not just about me and the life that I'm living right now. It's about the next generation. So I'm, I'm always thinking ahead to that. Like some people can't think ahead to next week, but I'm thinking ahead to like generations after I'm gone. Right. And the difference that that's going to be made because of the decisions that I'm making right now. So I choose that hard over wow. just a sitting on the rocking chair waiting to, you know, to the end. <laughs> so, you know, choose your heart. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I love that. And thank you for that. You know, um, you, you said something earlier that made me question, what made you want to share this journey with everyone? Um, really, I can't, I can't blame that on nothing but the calling because <laughs> I definitely mm. know it was a calling on my life. Like even as I was going through certain situations, I'm journaling, I'm writing, you know, originally just to get myself through uh, mentally through the things that I was going through. I was journaling, writing, I'd write songs, I'd do all, you know, sing and just all the talents that were already in me um, just flowed in order to help me to cope and get through those things. But the other thing that was always there that, that helped me keep my eye on the prize and see the light at the other end of the tunnel was knowing like one day this is going to be a book, one day this is going to be a movie. Like just knowing that sharing that testimony was going to help someone else who may be going through that I can't really explain how I was able to know that in the midst of it, because I also understand from the outside looking in how difficult that is to understand and believe when you're in the middle of it. It does not right. you know you can't you don't think about other people going through. You think about what you're going through right now and how do I survive this day? Right. So mm -hmm. I just thank God that I had the ability to do that in the midst of it. And that's really what kept me going and maybe it was the people pleaser in me i don't know <laughs> you know i've just i've always been that person like I, i'm thinking about everyone else before myself and i just always have done that and even going through um that's what helped me to save myself was thinking about other people wow and and were you were you going live or were you just journaling because i mean right now you're live sharing behind the scenes right. ups and downs and sideways and i love it i love it but i mean that takes a lot of Guts. A lot, uh -huh. a lot of people go online, and mm -hmm. it's okay to show the edited version of themselves. Right. But being real and raw is so right. hard on right. so many levels. To it at this point, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> so. and, then, I, and I, I want to know. I want right. to know how, how you do it and show up as that version all the time. Uh -huh. because that's not easy. So, so let me tell you, like, so the first part of what you said, the reason I chuckled is because when you said, was I going live? I'm thinking about when there was no live. <laughs> there was, 
I did not have a cell phone, like a smartphone. There was no, I remember Blackberry. So I'm telling my age, but like, <laughs> you know, I remember when I got a Blackberry, I felt like I was doing something. So there was no going live and doing all these things. So we have such an advantage. And that's why like this generation has no excuse. If God is calling you to do something, you better do it because you got so many tools at your disposal to make that happen. That's why we have so many 20 year old millionaires and billionaires. So, you know, like the, the going live is such a, a useful tool if used correctly. And, um, and I'm glad that I have that now, but I didn't have that then. And sometimes I'll look back on it. Like I'll see these, I'll see kids, for example, my daughter watches these kids that'll be playing with their Barbies on YouTube and getting just blowing up. Like, and they got a whole income to help take care of their family as a child playing with Barbies. Do you know how many movies I have wrote with my Barbies? Listen, like (laughs) (laughs) if I had YouTube back then and all these things that these kids had, so I'm trying to say, I don't wrote so many movies, but it's okay because I'm they're gonna be movies still, just not with Barbies, but just know that Barbies is where it started. Okay. <laughs> I need to get Barbie to be a sponsor too. But um, <laughs> but you know, like, I didn't have that advantage at that time. So now, like it, it took me a minute to get to this point. Like I'm going live behind the scenes a lot more, just in the last few months, even. Um, but I think it took a lot of like mistakes being made and um I'll give you an example. So I used to be afraid to eat in front of people. This is something a lot of people don't know. When I was in high school, I went through a a stage of um, anxiety where every time I tried to eat in a cafeteria, it felt like everyone was looking at me like in a scary movie. Like it just looked like everybody just turned around real slow and just like that. That's the that's what I was going through at that time with my anxiety. And I, and so I just stopped eating altogether. And when the adults found out that that's what was happening, then they started like letting me go into a, a room like the um, I forgot what they called it, but like the timeout room. And so um, in school suspension. Yeah, that's what it was. ISS. Oh, Lord, that's bringing back memories. <laughs> but they would let me go in there to eat. So people always thought I was in trouble. No, it wasn't that. But, you know, I was going in there to eat. So now as an adult, like I had to work through those things. And clearly I'm not afraid to eat in front of people anymore. But it took a process of working through that. And then as being an actress, there are so many pictures online with me with my mouth wide open, taking a bite of something. <laughs> and so it's just like... You know what? It's out there now. So it's the World Wide Web. You can't erase it. Whatever. I don't even care anymore. You know, so so, so in some cases, I say that to say that in some cases it was a matter of just making the mistakes and just tr- learning not to care what people think. Like, I, I've definitely reached that point. I don't think there is an embarrassment bone in my body anymore at this point because we're all human. And so many people need like when I do open my mouth to speak the things that I used to be nervous to speak about, the stories that I used to be afraid to tell, then um, people, there's so many people that come to me like, oh my gosh, I needed that. You don't understand. Like the testimonies that I get after the fact, even, even as severe as people who were thinking about taking their own life. And now they're like, because you shared that, I'm not going to do this now. Like that's so serious. Like people's lives are dependent on me showing up. So I can't be worried about being embarrassed and all this other stuff. Like I have to, as soon as it hits me to do it, I have to do it now without hesitation. And I'm getting way better at that. Hence why I go live so much more right now. <laughs> and, um, and, and I don't always feel like it. You said, you mentioned, um, I feel like there was several parts to this question. So I want to address every part of that, but you mentioned, <laughs> like showing up like, like myself all the time, I don't always show up as myself. And if people watch all of my interviews, you can see that some days I do not want to be here. Um, like that just the, I think the last one I did a couple of days ago was like that, but like, cause I was going through a whole crisis behind the scenes, but I show up because I understand how important it is. I understand that lives depend on it. I understand that how I'm feeling right now does not compare to somebody losing their life to suicide because I didn't show up. Like, it's just, you have to weigh yeah. pros and cons. So um, I have to show up. That's what I tell myself every time I don't feel like showing up. <laughs> I just, I just push through it. And sometimes I don't have as much energy. Um, sometimes I have to do extra things ahead of time, listen to music or do something to try to get myself pumped. And a lot of times even being live at the moment when I'm doing a pre-recorded interview helps because I know people are watching live right now. So, you know, I got to, <laughs> it helps get the energy even higher when I know it's pre-recorded, it's kind of like harder to get there. Um, mm-hmm. So I know it works for me and I just, I got to push through and do it. Like I said, do it scared, do it nervous, do it with anxiety, just do it. You got to do it. I'm not trying to plug Nike, but just do it. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my you God, know? We talked about way too many people who should be sponsors on this interview, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we'll give them a, a free sample. <laughs> no, listen, I, I, I love that you show up in that way because there are so many people. I mean, I can speak to my own anxieties, you know, and why I ended up doing this podcast, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people don't speak about what it is they should be speaking about that would right. help help numerous people exactly you know and and maybe it's not even severe trauma but it could be anxiety like i'll speak to my daughter you know she's mm -hmm. an amazing singer yeah but getting her to sing in front of large audiences she'll sing on her phone now that i'm like okay you're gonna you're gonna go in the car you're gonna go record this oh. and i'm like you have to work through it mm -hmm. you know because you'll never get out, you'll never be on the opposite side of it. Exactly. And I see it every day, you know? And that's so awesome that you encourage her. Like, that's a big thing for me with my kids. Like I mentioned earlier, I did not mm -hmm. have that type of uh, family encouragement. Mm -hmm. So when my kids say they like something or they want to do something or I don't care if it's coloring or whatever, I'm just like, oh, you are so good at this. Like, I'm just <laughs> like over, you know, over the topics. <laughs> Even if it don't sound all that good, it's like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Voice lessons. You know, we got <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Like just encouraging them to to keep doing that. That's great that you do that for your daughter. No, listen, we all need encouragement, right? We all need to feel. And do you feel like your audience gives you that? Do they give you that fire? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. It's, yeah, the the audience is the main thing. You know that does that that keeps me going because sometimes I can't encourage myself. You know, um, I get I get discouraged from time to time, but just the audience is definitely what does it for me. Wow. Wow. And how long did it take for you to build your community or find your tribe? Um, well, I'm still building it, so I can't really answer that question. <laughs> I don't think um, there's not a specific number that I'm trying to reach. Oh, take that back. So on okay. Instagram, I'm almost to 100K, y'all. So go ahead, follow me on Instagram because <laughs> I've got a few more. I think I got a few more hundred to get to 100K. But that's not the goal. You know, ultimately, it, there's no specific number. Um like I said, when I came to Atlanta and I was just hustling and, and known as the cookie lady, and that's what people knew me for more than acting. I'm like, I didn't appreciate that. But and then it went from that to then I was out, you know, as a humanitarian feeding the homeless and people knew me as the lady that feeds the homeless that, you know, a lot of people still wasn't realizing the main thing that I'm doing is acting. And this is what I want y'all to see. But, you know, I just continued to build in whatever way I could. And um, and so there's no set number. It's continually growing every day. And especially with, like I said, in the last few months, just going live a lot more. Um, new people are going to pop onto my lives all the time that have never seen me before. And if they if they feel gravitated to follow me, then there we go. So um, at this point, I'm not trying too hard to build the following because I understand the process of that God's going to send people who um resonate with mm -hmm. what I'm doing and where I'm at and and my spirit and and they're gonna hear something that they need. So I don't I don't feel like I have to be like, you know, follow me, follow me, follow me. Because if you're listening and this is touching your heart, you're gonna follow me. That's what I do mm -hmm. when I see somebody that's touching my heart. I'm like, oh I'm gonna follow them because this is inspirational to me. So um you know God does that and that's the best way to do it because so many people have fallen off. Like I don't think them same cookie people or <laughs> you know the feed the homeless people some of them are still following me. A lot of them are not they fall off and if it's if it doesn't really resonate with your spirit it, you're not gonna stick around long anyway you're just gonna be here for the moment you can try to ride people's coattails sometimes i have mm -hmm. that happen even within my company like people come they volunteer they sign up and then they don't know what they're getting themselves into and then they drop off um you know but it happens all the time but that's why i'm i'm so trusting in the process of okay god send me the people that are really about this life because <laughs> they're the ones that are going to stick around and i want mm -hmm. quality over quantity and I want the people long term. And that's what I'm starting to get right now as I'm as I'm making that transition. I love that. And who do you want or what do you want people to know you for? Mm, that is a good question. Wow. Um, hmm, you really got me thinking real deep on that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, like I, I want to leave a legacy. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, I know that I do a lot and I know that people won't you know, when I'm gone from here, won't always remember like, oh, she was the actress. She did this. She did this. She did that. She, they might not know all the things that I that I did as far as work goes. But like I said, that one common denominator is that my goal is to change people's lives, is to inspire and encourage people. Um, when I do leave here, I want to know that that's what I did and that's what I'm doing. So, you know, at any point in time, 
we don't know when that time is for any of us, but I know that I'm I'm doing it every day. So when I get to that time, I'm going to know that I did that. But I want to leave a legacy, especially for I call them the great eight. They are the next generation of me, my children, my nieces and nephews, um, the great eight. Uh, I, I think they're going to carry the torch. And I'm starting to see that as they grow into adulthood. Um, the gifts and talents that God has given them and then me inputting everything that I know and I'm learning um, and continue to learn into them. They're just going to be so powerful. I just want this next generation to be even more powerful, even more great, even more inspiring. Like that's what it's all about to me. So I just want to leave that legacy. And what are they going to be teaching others? And what do you hope that they teach others? Um, I mean, oh gosh, there's so many, <laughs> there's so many things I could say to that because it's just all things positive. Um, you know, loving your life, living life. Um, scripture, scripture is is big um, in my book, in the in the book of the Bible. <laughs> um, continuing to teach that. Um, we talk right now. I think in this generation, we talk a lot about manifesting. That's a big thing right now, and a lot of people don't realize how scriptural that is. Um, we are told in the Bible that we're supposed to speak to mountains and they will move. I believe God used the example of a mountain, which is a humongous thing for our human mind, um, as something that we can literally move with our voice because that means we can move anything, right? So I teach these kids that all the time. Um, we go on vacations all the time and they're really more like a boot camp of training, a training ground for them to understand that this is what you're you have the ability to do this because God gave this to you. And so I trained them to do it and they do it all the time. When I tell you, like it's it blows my mind every time because I believe it and I'm I'm learning to believe it. I taught myself to believe it. I'm learning to believe it. I'm reminded all the time when I have doubt as a human being, you have doubt. And then God shows up and he shows me, okay, what, what did I say? <laughs> you know, like a, like a parent, what I say? <laughs> so, um, you know, so the, so with the kids there, they were taught, they were, I started so young with all of them. And so they're growing up, not having any doubt. Like they don't have these life experiences that are causing them to doubt, you know, that my teenagers are just now starting to really experience some of those things. But now they we've established the foundation of you can really do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can really speak to mountains and they will move. You can mm -hmm. really cast demons out of people. You can really speak to sicknesses and it has to go like you can actually do this. But it's hard even to like I've just gotten comfortable with saying that. Because in this day and age, it's hard for people to say that. They're going to sound crazy. Ooh. You know, Ooh. Like, thank you for that. These things. Pastors don't be saying these things. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's the truth. And I, I've been teaching these children that even when I doubted, even when I mm -hmm. didn't necessarily. And when I tell you every single time I have um, made a plan to take these kids to Six Flags, to Universe, wherever we, wherever I've taken them, if the weather is saying that it is going to storm, it's going to be tornadoes. It's going to be hurricanes, whatever the weather is saying that's negative. And then and they'd be like, they lying. It ain't going to do that because we got plans today and God, God got us. We we good. We're going to speak to that storm. It's going to move. And then we go outside and I'm looking like, ooh, these clouds is rolling. But I don't say it out loud because I know better. I don't say it out loud, even though my mind is like, ooh, these clouds kind of rolling in right now. I don't I don't know. if it's gonna, but I don't say it. I don't let them see my doubt because I want them to believe so hard. And when I tell you, I have seen these kids go outside and literally blow a storm out the way. And it will mm -hmm. be pouring everywhere except where we're doing our thing at. It's sunny and bright. I'm like, oh Lord, <laughs> like, you know, like that's how powerful they are. And just imagine if they're starting with that foundation, how powerful they're gonna be as adults. It's just, my mind is blown every time. And that's just one of the many examples of- <laughs> No, but it's true. Yeah. It's true, right? So a kid never fear something until we show them that that thing you know, yeah. don't touch that because it's going to burn you or don't do this, yeah. you know, and then that's where they de develop that fear, you know, right. lack of confidence in themselves, you know, yeah, and I, I think we got to teach them common sense, but they shouldn't be fearing like the, the only thing they should fear is God, like the, mm -hmm. the healthy fear of God, like that, mm -hmm. that if you don't do what he say, he's he going to get you, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, that's the only fear that, that I want them to have. So yeah, fear, fear limits us so much and it comes from our experiences, our traumas. And so many of us have that. And that's why I think there are a lot of us now who are working to 
um, I won't say eliminate, but just just to help people to work through that and prevent it. A lot of us are working to prevent traumas for our children. But again, as a human being, you're going to experience some things in life that affect you in a negative way. There's accidents. There's all these things. Um, but it's how you respond to it and just teaching them that. And um, that's that's what's going to help them to get through it when when that time does come. And then having that love and support to know, like, OK, Mom told me that this might happen, you know, these kind of things, heartbreak, whatever, you know, this might happen. But now I'm aware of it. I know what it looks like. I know how to get through it better. And mm -hmm. they just handle it so much better than than we did. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And tell me, I'm going to hop into your book. Tell me a little bit about it. Who does it speak to and what is it about? Absolutely. So that's what I had reached over to grab the second I realized when we first started, like, oh, I forgot to put my book in front of me. But this is my book. Um, it is I Am a Poetic Ensemble. Um, it is a memoir of my life. So I tell about the traumas that I went through. Um, it's written in poetry format because most of it um, is actually real life journal entries that I was writing as I was going through the thing. So I was writing these poems and everything to get me through stuff. And so by the time I decided to turn it into a book, I basically just had to try to put everything in chronological order the best that I could from all of this piles of, of um, notebooks and things that I've had since childhood um, and then put it you know, into a story and it, and it flows as poetry. So it's also meant to be performed as monologues. And then it's also a self-help book. So in the back of my book, I put um, notes and references. So if, any, if anything is resonating um, with people that they um, have been through these things or might be going through these things, then there's some help in the back on how to get out of them. So trigger warning for everybody. We do speak about the things that a lot of people don't want to speak about. So we speak about suicide. We speak about homelessness. We speak about depression, um, domestic violence, child abuse, um, all of these things, human trafficking. Um, I only speak from my own experience and what I know. So everything that I speak about, I have been through at some point in my life, whether for a short period of time or an extended period of time, I've experienced it. And so I write about it from my own experience. And in doing that, it's is really I've been I've been on tour with this thing since COVID, um, since the world opened back up after COVID. So so um, I've been pushing this one really hard, but the next few books are going to be coming quickly behind it. But I want to express to everyone how important it is to get this one because this is the first and the original. So it's basically a sampler platter of everything that is to come. And I also like a good mystery and um, it, it has hidden messages inside of it, I'll say. Ooh. And so... Um, there, there's hidden messages inside. There's things that you're not going to fully understand until you read the second one or until you watch the show that goes along with it. With every book that I have um, that and even the ones that are coming, they all have a show that goes with them. Most of them have an interactive show that you have to be there to experience because it's part oh. film, part live, part live interaction. It's just when I tell you we, us three productions is doing something. Nobody's done this. <laughs> this is I'm loving it. I, just as they come to me, I'm like, you want me to do what? Like, that's not crazy. But I just start doing it and then God just makes a way and it all happens. And that's how I know it's not my own. So um, so that's where where the that's the book and, and everything that comes from that is really a movement. It's a journey. Um, you just got to read it. It's one of those books you can definitely sit down and read in one night. I get a lot of people telling me, as you can see, it's not it's not that big. It's not too much um, because personally, and you're going to think this is strange. I'm an author, but I'm not a big reader. Um, <laughs> if it doesn't flow smoothly and I can't get through it, like get stuck in, you know, like then I'm not going to probably finish it, honestly. <laughs> so I tried to make my book finishable. Um, I like to make up words that aren't in the dictionary. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, it flows and a lot of people will be like, I could not put it down. I read it in one night and that just swarms my heart to know that. <laughs> but it's awesome. definitely it's definitely a movement. Y'all got to join the join the movement. <laughs> so. So, OK, let's touch on that a little bit. So we buy the book and then in there it just leads us to the movie. Or do we do we have to to go on the link, go on the website first? Mm -hmm. How does that process work? So you definitely want to connect with me on all your social media platforms. And I have, you know, ways to connect with me by phone. So you can get text messages and things. But the more that you're connected with me, the more you're going to know what's going on and be able to kind of follow it. Like I said, it's a movement. So um, there are, you know, hidden messages within pictures. I'll see if I can find an example for you just to give you guys. And, and as the people who really like die hard follow me, they're going to show up to book signings and speakings and, and they're going to pop onto my interviews and they're going to get even more of this. But I 
I'll give you guys um, just a little bit for an example. So like, uh, let's see, I'm trying to get one that pops out to me. So like, so this one, for example, the way I have, if you can see the words, the way I have it basically like stair steps, right. like there's a, if you read that, then the message with the stair steps is behind that message. So, you mm. know, the steps that it takes to get to this point is what I'm writing about. So it's like little stuff like that, that you'll know as you follow me. And now the ones who follow me, they're on my live right now. Now they know. So, you know, it's like certain <laughs> things are going to come out over time. Some things, again, won't be released until the next book. Then you'll be able to read the next book and you're going to have to compare notes. I love when I get people who their book looks like a whole Bible or notebook or something like they got sticky notes sticking out the edges of it and they don't take it all highlighted and all this stuff like they're trying to pick it apart. And I love that because it's, it's important. I even have one of the poems in there specifically says that if I write something the right what like I'm writing it the right way and I purposely spell right like W-R-I-T-E. R-I-G-H-T. I know how to spell and I have mm-hmm. editors. So, you know, like I, I did that on purpose. Like, you know, so just um, the more people follow along and, and understand me, the more they'll understand my projects. And that's one of the reasons why I have stuck with this book so long and pushed it so long before the next one comes out, because I want people to really um, be attached to that and, and understand that journey. So like, I want to build that following with this one. So by the time the next one comes out, there's not so many new people seeing the second one first, and then they got to go back and catch up with everybody else. Yes. If that makes sense. So, yeah. Um, so that's why we're kind of been focused on this one. And then also, of course, my show, I have, a um, my show nine lives is what goes with the book. I am. So again, I have a show with every, with every um, book. So nine lives is what goes with this book. And it took nine different characters of which I I play all nine of them um, in order to tell these stories. So I break down the traumatic experiences that I've had into nine different circumstances and each character speaks on a separate circumstance. Wild, wild. And I know when I spoke to you first, I was like, how do you even unpack that? Like, it's wild. I love it. I love it. I'm glad that you are here. I'm glad that you have the ability to share. I'm glad that you choose to share because, because we have the ability doesn't mean that we take the next steps to do it, you know? Right. And right. I appreciate the fact that you're doing it and sharing with everyone. I need you to speak to our entrepreneurs that are listening mm-hmm. about this whole journey. Now your journey, you know, is your journey, but If you could go back and speak to your younger self, what would you go back and tell yourself in regards to entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship. Hmm. Now you're getting specific. I gotta really think on this one. (laughs) Um, so I it's that's hard because I really put myself in my younger self's position. And imagining that scenario, when you give me, I'm an actress, so when you give me a scenario, I'm soaking it in and I'm processing it like I'm really there right now. But my younger self did not plan on being an entrepreneur and did not anticipate this part of it. Like I didn't (laughs) I don't know what to tell myself besides, hey, when the time comes that you feel like you called to be an entrepreneur, go ahead and do that thing. Like, don't be scared. (laughs) I don't know what to say because I had no idea. Like the entrepreneurship was not the thing. Acting obviously was the main thing. And I don't really necessarily consider an actor an entrepreneur really. But and so they start taking on a bunch of other things. So actors end up becoming entrepreneurs, I guess, because most actors end up doing other talents and gifts and and things as well. But I just was um, I guess I would tell myself that despite the lack of encouragement, um, you don't need anybody but God to encourage you. Uh, You got this. Do it. Do it scared. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. If I could tell myself that earlier, then I wouldn't be just getting through that process now, I guess, as an adult, I'm just just learning that myself now. So I guess if I could have told myself that earlier, I could have processed that a lot quicker. <laughs> like, just go out there and don't give up, please, you know. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, that, that would have been a good thing to know early on because you do start out with so much fear, especially coming mm-hmm. from trauma and traumatic experiences and then experiencing more that caused you to pull back and fear even more. But you know, I'm an introvert, believe it or not. Um, no, that's hard to believe because of my career choice. But, um, you know, I would that's why I would tell myself, like, to not stay cooped up and, and withdrawn that you're 
your story is so important. Um, make sure you write everything down. And, and the funny thing is, I feel like I was telling myself that like wow. the whole time I was younger and I'm going through these experiences. Ooh, this is making me write a whole nother movie in my head right now. See what you done did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like the, literally the whole time I'm younger, I'm talking to my future self. Like I felt wow. like I was really experiencing my future self because I didn't like where I was now. So there's a thing called disassociation. There's actually a name mm -hmm. that therapists come up with stuff to name stuff now. Um, so there, there, you know, I was disassociating, but I also was always focused on the future me. I didn't connect with now. And that's the reason why my memory is so bad. I don't remember really much before high school. Um, I remember bits and pieces, mostly traumatic experiences is the main thing I can remember. But like just regular life, like a lot of people can tell you who their high school teachers were or like they still remember their names and the friends that they had. So like there's a lot that I don't remember unless it's still present in my life now. I, I blocked it out because I did disassociate. So I can honestly say that as I was going through things, I, when I was writing in my journal, I was writing to my future self as if my past self was already there coaching me through it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I know that's deep. Wow. I just movie don't y'all take my idea because that's about to be a movie <laughs> no i love that i really really love that and you know what I'm, I'm glad you brought that to the forefront because sometimes we blame it on a foggy memory but it could be more than that oh yeah yeah definitely it's it's wow. scientifically proven now maybe scientifically proven stuff now that i had already taught myself and figured out myself and then it comes out and i'll be like oh dang so i had that right <laughs> <laughs> i could have got paid for that like <laughs> But, you know, figured it out myself. <laughs> wow. Again, and did you did you did you enlist any mentors or coaching or anything along the way? Um, I, I think that's something that I'm just now getting into as well. So my mentors have always been people like Tony Robbins, people that I guess coming up, I felt like we're out of reach. Um, <laughs> you know, people like Beyonce. Um, like these were my mentors, like because I I was always thinking higher. And I did not fit in with who was on my level and, and the people around me, even like even with details, like when it comes to age, all my friends are like in their 60s and up for the most part, like my closest friends. And so like I, I've just never connected with people on my level age wise, spiritually, like anything. And so so I've always aimed higher. And so those people that were my mentors um, were out of my reach. And so I'm just now getting to the place where it's like, OK, these people are within my reach now. Like I'm about to I, I'm going to an event. Um, I think it's next. It's in November. I'm so excited about it because there's some huge mentors, um, public speakers that um, I'm not going to drop any names because I, I don't want to forget anybody because there's a lot of people involved with this. But y'all see y'all see it posted on my page. Just follow me. Um, so there's a lot of them that are going to be speaking at this event. And I made sure I got my VIP ticket. So I will be right there in the front and I can have my time with them. And I'm going to the after party. I'm going to be all up in their face because I'm going to let them know, like, y'all my only mentor. So I need y'all to be mentoring me for real in real life now. Like this is <laughs> so those have been, you know, those have been my mentors. And now they're finally within my reach and there's still a lot more of them that um, I'm looking forward to um, speaking to directly and saying, you know, you mentored me. You don't even know it. <laughs> wow. That's what it is. <laughs> wow. And then see, that goes back full circle to what you were saying, that the things that we put online is going to be touching someone that you don't even know that you're touching. Exactly. So when they had the courage to go out there and be that person and show up, right. they showed up for you without... Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's another thing that encourages me because I still, like I said, I go on YouTube when I get discouraged, I go on YouTube, I find that person that's motivated me and I'm like, wow, they know what they're doing. Like they know they're inspiring and encouraging so many people, but do they really understand the extent of the people that they are inspiring? Like you're inspiring the next MLK, you're inspiring the next Rosa Parks, you're inspiring like people that are going to go down in history mm -hmm. and create major legacies. And they can say that you inspired them. Like you don't even realize how big a deal you are. Like, and that's, that's the level I'm just now starting to get to that point. And I'm like, dang, that means I got to show up even more. That means I really can't be sleeping on myself, you know, <laughs> like, wow. and because they're inspiring me, like I, I put myself in those shoes as well. So yeah, it's, it's I love that. And you need to use it. Sleeping on yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, people sleep on themselves all day long, all day long. 
Because fear and, yep. and, you know, <laughs> let me go back to that. You know, fear doesn't come from God. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and I, I before I started a podcast, I always ask that the, the people that come on this show mm -hmm. are people that I connect with and are on the same wavelength. And I can see that he always gives you what you ask for. So whenever you're asking, make sure that you're specific. Yeah. Don't leave out the details. Be specific about what it is you want. I learned in adulthood, which somebody mm -hmm. told me earlier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Listen, yes. some, sometimes you ask and you're like, dear Lord, give me a plane. But you didn't ask for it for with, with an engine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dear Lord, give me a husband. Oh, I was not specific. Uh, you had this one back. Let me go ahead and be specific. <laughs> Very true. Very true. We have to be so, so specific about everything that we ask for. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to thank you so much. You. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, yep, you get what you ask for. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that was, um, yeah, I was just co-signing what you said. You get what you ask for. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to what I was saying about manifesting. Yep. And that mouth is powerful. The Bible tells you that. You better use it. That's your, that's your biggest tool. Yep, absolutely. Advice. Absolutely, absolutely. And for our, our entrepreneurial listeners out there, I mean, how can they how can they support you as an entrepreneur? So do you offer... Um, do you offer anything within your ecosystem that they can get involved in? Oh, absolutely. So the best way to connect and get in touch with me is going to be two ways, actually. Vitel.net, that's V-I-T-E-L-L-E dot N-E-T. You want to go there and subscribe via email on the first page. You'll see the little button where you subscribe. Put in your email so that you can get emails from me, as well as text message is also a great. I consider my text message people the VIP VIPs, okay? So <laughs> you want to text me at 770 626 5075 and make sure you follow the prompts on the autoresponder because otherwise it won't get to me on my end. Um, if you're interested in casting calls, you can text the word casting to that number. Um, if you're just interested in following, you can just say hi. It doesn't matter what you say. As long as you follow the prompts, add yourself to my contact list so that you can get text messages. When I have shows coming to you, when I have book releases, I often give discounts and sometimes free giveaways to my my followers who are subscribed via email and text. Um, so that's the best way to stay in the loop with what's going on. And definitely make sure you find out because we are bringing in 2025, Nine Lives is coming to nine different cities. Oh my gosh, every time I say it out loud, I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's happening. It's going down. It's already out there. We're doing it. Um, wow. Nine different cities. So if you are in Orlando. What are the nine cities? Oh, you want me? To, okay, I was just yeah. not to I got you. I got you. Okay, so Orlando, uh, Orlando, Florida, Birmingham, Alabama, Riley, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Washington, D.C., Houston, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Boston, Massachusetts, and Bowling Green, Kentucky are the nine cities that are coming up at the top of the year, starting in January. Again. I am nervous. I'm not going to lie. I am a human being. I am nervous as heck. This is a big undertaking. I have been on tour with this for a long time. I've done this show more than 20 times, so I'm not worried about the show. The show is good. The show is solid. Everybody loves the show, but nine cities? Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> so sometimes, again, the calling, it, once once you answer that call, the calling can often get even bigger. You just, that, that confidence keeps building and you keep believing yourself. And if you're not scared, then you're not dreaming big enough. That was a quote that I heard a long time ago. I can't even remember who said it, but that has stuck with me. And if I'm doing something that I'm too comfortable, it's too easy. I must not be dreaming big enough. So this right here, we're dreaming big on this one. Me and my team, yep. this one's scaring the crap out of me, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> Listen, I, I believe you will. I believe you will. You're wearing so many hats already. I'm, I'm sure this is going to be a walk in the park. <laughs> I'm sorry. God, I'm there for you. Constant <laughs> prayer. Amazing team who constantly prays for me and with me. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, is there anything that you want to leave our audience with today? Man, I feel like I've dropped so many gems throughout this. So. Um, <laughs> it's so funny so. how I cannot feel like going live at all. I'm like rushing behind the scenes, the chaos to get to this point. But then as soon as I do, then God just gives me the words to say. And 
funny thing, when people ask that question, I never know what I'm going to say until right this second, it just hit me that go forth because God is going to give you the word. Like you don't even have a plan. You don't even know exactly how this is going to look. You just know that you are being called to do something. So start taking those steps moving forward. Sometimes we have to walk upstairs that are invisible. Trust me, I know. And it is difficult to do because you cannot see the next stair and you don't know if you're going to fall over into the abyss. Okay. So you just have to literally trust God sometimes to just take that step, even when you can't see it and know that it is going to appear the moment that you set foot on it, it's going to appear and you're going to keep running up those steps because it's going to get easier and easier to trust as those steps appear. So take that first step. God is going to give you the words. He's going to give you the tools. Um, don't feel like you got to do it perfectly. Don't feel like everything's got to be perfectly in place. I got to have this much money. I got to have all these things before I can do what I'm called to do. No, you go ahead and start doing that thing because if God's calling you to do it, he's going to make a way for it to happen. And that's period. So <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. And I loved having you on today. Thank you so much for taking the time. You are an amazing, powerful woman. Just keep going out there, showing up for everybody because I'm telling you, you're doing more than you know. Thank you. Touching. Tom. I, I hope that whoever needs to see this, sees it. Absolutely. And I have faith that they will. And thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you so much to your listeners as well for tuning in. I appreciate y'all. Of course. Thank you again. Thank you for tuning into today's episode of Entrepreneurial Truth. One tool that I can truly recommend on how you can organize and execute systems is Notion. Notion allows you to seamlessly get information out of your head and into a centralized, organized space. Whether it's documenting processes, managing projects, or brainstorming ideas, Notion can be your go-to platform. As a special offer to our listeners, you can get started with Notion using the link in the episode description. By using our affiliate link, you not only support our podcast, but also gain access to free templates designed to kickstart your journey with Notion. These templates are specifically crafted to help entrepreneurs streamline their workflows and boost productivity. To take advantage of this offer, simply visit the affiliate link below to sign up and explore the free templates available in the resource section. Whether you're a solopreneur, managing a team, Notion can be the game changer you've been looking for. Stay tuned for more episodes where we dive deep into strategies, tools that can empower you as an entrepreneur. And don't forget to subscribe to Entrepreneurial Truth so you never miss an episode filled with actionable advice and insights. Thank you once again for joining us today. Until next time, keep innovating and scaling your business with purpose. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.